views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Somerville Community Access Television. And enough is enough, what you say. So, tell me why you guys, what you guys are doing here today. We're protesting uh, in favor of gun control and uh, stricter gun control laws and, and assault rifles ban, but more specifically, we are trying to get the ERPO bill passed, which is the Extreme Risk Protection Bill. Um, yeah. Tell us more about that bill. Um, so <laughs> the bill basically says that if one of your household members reports you as a danger to yourself or others, um, then you'll have 14 days for a court trial. And if you are ruled as a danger, then the government can take away your guns and ammo for a year. And then it can, you know, every year they can reevaluate. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that this bill has a lot of importance because uh, this would prevent um, a lot of kind of school shootings and which is, I guess, what we are trying to prevent here uh, happen because you know, s students kind of, for whatever reason, mentally, you know, they develop the urge to kill people. They have this problem, you know, it's obvious sometimes. Like, for example, with the Parkland shooting, um, the police was called on uh, the shooter several, several times, like over 30, I believe. It was yeah. 23 mm -hmm. confirmed? Think. Yeah, 38. Um, so with the extremist protective order, um, this would allow household members or people extremely close to the person who has this urge to hurt themselves or others to report them. And then it would allow the authorities to have a clear path to take action so these people cannot have access to guns to you know, enact on their urges to yeah. harm. Great. Tell me about the organizing you guys did too. Um, um, so, um, at least so from my school, Cambridge and Latin, uh, we walked out at 817, uh, which is basically all the other schools did too, um, and we walked, well after 17 minutes of silence, uh, we walked all the way to Union Square, which is where we are now, um, and then we gathered to um, call representatives about kind of like this movement, um, and so Somerville met us here. Um, and just recently Medford arrived because um, they there's a threat of suspension so it took obviously they were farther away so it took a little longer but there's the, also that threat so there was less students coming from their school yeah okay we organized a lot using social media because we know that that is how we ourselves speak to our a lot of our peers so we have we made Instagram, an Instagram account, a Facebook account, we have a Twitter page, which they're all under students uh, AGV USA. And we, uh, we, um, we also just posted on everything we knew. We, uh, we called as many people as we knew from other schools and from our own school. And we just tried to get the word and the plan out there as much as humanly possible because we wanted, I mean, the bigger the number, the bigger the statement. So how many people, how many schools are here? Um, well, so last week, Somerville High walked out as our first thing. And then this week, um, here right now, we have Somerville High, Cambridge Ridge and Latin, and Medford High. But And some students from And Arlington. some students from Arlington came because Arlington High also walked out. And a school in New Hampshire, Granite, Salem, Granite, Granite State, State Arts Academy, Academy um, attempted to walk out, but they were physically blocked by teachers, which is illegal. Yeah, they were not allowed to leave. They were not allowed to leave their school and protest, and were informed that if it's disruptive to the school day, it, they are not allowed to do it, and which is false. Um, and we will be contacting. We have contacted, we have contacted yeah. the ACLU, and we've also contacted their headmaster about. But contacting. it's like we were having a hard time getting through because of um, certain like restrictions. Yeah. Um, with mm -hmm. contacting them, so it was kind of frustrating. Here. Um. Another thing we did for organizing, this is also including the walkout that Somerville High School did last week. Um, we worked very hard to contact the media and the press because part of this is about getting our message out there into the public eye. Because uh, that's, that's part of how this movement starts is students making their voices heard, people seeing this. Um, and then especially in this day and age when a lot of major political change happens through news stories, happens through things going viral. Uh, we felt that it was incredibly important that we gain some press attention from this. Um, uh, so that's why we feel that the walkout actually 
is probably one of the most important parts of this because it's making a statement, it's making a bold statement saying that we will sacrifice a day of education uh, in order to make our voices heard. What do you guys say to the people who say that this is disruptive to the school day and that you're missing out on your education? What do you say to those people? I mean, you know what else is disruptive to the school day? An active shooter. Um, if people tell us, and this is, I mean, well, Jonathan said yeah. this earlier, but if people tell us that we should be in school, so should the Parkland students, the 17 Parkland students, the people from Sandy Hook, they should all be in school too, and they are not able to because they were killed tragically, and that is not something that we should just stand by and watch happen. We shouldn't, this is not cutting class. We're, we are actively helping each other to try and keep grades up and to try and make sure the kids aren't falling behind in class because it's not about whether or not the school itself is is viable in terms of education it's about safety it's about the fact that we are taking a stance for our safety because the government won't um we're also not just doing nothing we're calling um senators and state representatives to try to get these bills passed and like Sam was saying we got to get it in the media but we got to keep it in the press we got to keep it in the public eye because as soon as the news cycle turns over these bills are not going to get passed um, just I guess something that I've been thinking a lot about is like we are like this generation that is like making decisions and we're trying to educate uh, both those of, uh, ahead of us who have been unable and those who come behind us who are younger than us who are maybe one day would be in the same situation where they need to get something to change so we want to be um, I guess like someone to look up, up to in this like really hard time. Yeah. I also want to say that it's distracting to go to school and to imagine that at any moment you can feel unsafe and like waking up every morning you're supposed to be able to go to school and to learn and to focus and better yourself as a person but instead of doing that you're thinking about how someone could come in and harm you or harm your friends or the people you love and by continuing to allow this stuff to happen over and over again and by not speaking up and by not making a difference for whatever reason, it just seems unacceptable to me. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys feel safe at school? No. No, no, no it's scary. I honestly, I honestly like, think about a lot, like where I am, like what would I do if this happened? Like, and that just shouldn't be the case at all. I know, and it feels like, you know, this has been going on for such a long time and our representatives and the adults around us have done, you know, have not made any progress. So, and I think the students are really the ones that are going to make the change yeah. and they're the ones that yeah. have to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the day after the shooting in Florida, um, there's like this really like kind of loud popping noise in the hallway and where I was in the school, like, so I immediately started thinking like, oh my gosh, like, what if this is like really happening? And then I was like, I was sitting there, I'm like, I'm on the fourth floor, I'm not near any exits, like what would I do? Like I was sitting there and I was like panicking. And because we were just like sitting there, like we were doing independent reading because it was my English class and we were sitting there and I was just, I was like, like how can this happen? And I mean, it clearly wasn't anything, but I was like, how can I, like a student, like still sit here every day and be like, oh my gosh, like what if this was us? Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like some, some people make the argument that since we live in Massachusetts, a state that has very good gun control, um, that we, we shouldn't be taking such an active stance on this issue. And I, I think it really is true that this could happen anywhere. Um, I know that last week, I believe, a um, school in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. yeah. had an, uh, a shooter with a loaded gun come into the school, um, and they were on lockdown for hours. Um, and and I just I think that this this issue is 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 so kind of widespread, and that especially us in this generation, we've grown up with this. We've grown up doing active shooter drills, and we've had to face the reality that someone could come into our school and harm us from a very young age. Yeah. Younger than anyone should have to be thinking about death and their own death. Um, I think that that's incredibly important for politicians and lawmakers to understand that this is how we have grown up. We've grown up with this fear and we've grown up with this sense of, you know, it's a small world. Um, 
you know, I, I personally know someone who went to the Sandy Hook Elementary School yeah. at the time when the shooting there happened. I mean, it's it's such a small world, and I don't think anyone in any state, regardless of gun control, should have to fear for their lives in school. Um, you know, this is about common sense. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's common sense. And, and I think that Massachusetts, you know, regardless of gun control, there's always things to be improved. And this is a situation that's so widespread that I don't think anyone's immune. Yeah. And also, like, yes, we're in Massachusetts, but we've lost two students to gun violence this year. Yeah. My house has been shot at. It's not, like, an issue that we haven't dealt with. Yeah. yeah absolutely. What do your parents think about this? The other adults here? Um, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, but I know personally my family is very proud of this and have kind of gone to all of, to both walkouts that we've done. Um, I know my grandma's been really active in helping. Uh, yeah. No, she's. It, they they're very supportive. I know that. I mean, our families are called in or from Somerville High School. Our families are called and emailed when we walk out. Our, there is also an email sent out before the walkout from the principal or headmaster, which essentially says, like, your kids are walking out. Um, we don't want them to miss school, but this is what's happening. And I think a lot of families are really proud that their kids are taking this stance because they know that the adults haven't done it they haven't stood out there like this and this is a chance that we have to really really say speak our part and you know do our part to try and help this and I think I don't know my family is very happy that we are we are actively trying to fix this and actively being involved in politics and in, in this in this movement can I just, yeah. sorry <laughs> I just also wanted to say you know I know my parents have also been very supportive of this whole movement you know they're very proud that I'm organizing you know doing something very constructive I just wanted to point out however you know some some families I know are not as supportive for a variety of reasons but I I think it's also incredibly important to recognize the students who don't walk out and who mm -hmm. really want to. Yeah. Um, I think, especially at our school, our school is very diverse, has a lot of um, people from many countries. I think an issue that we face sometimes is people who feel like education is their number one priority. You know, perhaps they move to this country because they want better educational opportunities for their children. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that these parents and these kids want to support the cause and are doing everything they can within the building um, to support the cause. But for many people who, who I guess, in a sense, don't have the privilege to walk out, um, yeah. they're still doing a lot of hard work. Um, and it's important to recognize that not everyone can walk out and that this issue, you know, should be represented from all fronts. Um. And, you know, speaking to that, there are other options that we've been talking about with the administration that are more inclusive for people who can't walk out. We're considering a teach-in at our school. Uh, we're also, we have this thing, we're calling it a blackout. We all wear black. And we publicize that as much as we publicize the walkout itself. So students who can't necessarily walk out with us are also doing that. A lot of students who can't risk the whole day or risk their parents finding out because their parents aren't supportive have been doing the 17 minutes of silence with us because we've been walking out and sitting on Highland Ave, which is right outside of our school, in silence for 17 minutes and you will not be penalized or to and your parents won't be told about that. So a lot of students are doing that to, to try and um, help as much as they can without necessarily risking that. <laughs> um, so actually, I'd say a majority of our school participated in the 17 oh, yeah. minutes of silence yeah. at our school. Um, it was really powerful. I was walking around taking photos, and it was just amazing to hear the silence of so many students. Um, there's about 2,000 kids at my school, so I, I can't actually tell you the numbers, but for about sure, 1200, but about 1,200 is what the estimated yeah. number was. So it was kind of impressive to have that number. Um, so that's that's an option for students. A lot of kids went back to classes just because it's obviously very hard. Um, I almost wasn't able to because um, some teachers aren't as willing to be helpful to students. Mm -hmm. um, but I think overall, like we are also having blackouts too. Um, but overall, just like trying to get the word out and trying to have the same kind of awareness. Great. So if you guys want to speak directly to the camera and speak directly to your lawmakers, tell them what you want. Before you guys do that, the two girls in the back, can you lift up the shades? Because I want everyone to yep. see everything that's going on here. Um, and I, think oh, the way. Way. <laughs> I want, yeah, lift it all the way up, all three of them, because I want folks 
you know, to be able to see our whole Yeah, we do. We have yeah. about, we have hundreds of yeah, kids out there. Kids have been out there, there for hours. Which I open that third one. We've been out there since like, I mean, what time do we get? We've been out here since like 9 a.m. They they haven't left. They're still making phone calls. Some people are calling the ACLU on behalf of the Granite State Arts Academy uh, kids because we are furious that they weren't allowed to protest with us because that's not yeah. That's not how this should okay. work. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, no, they're incredible. Like, yeah. they're Medford, insane. 80 kids walked four miles to get yeah. here. They, they walked. They didn't even drive. They yeah. came all the way here on foot. It was incredible. Yeah. And everyone kind of, like, there's lots of posters. We've yeah. been doing lots of, like, cheers and outreach, et cetera. Yeah. And, um, incredible. So if you hear the honking, yeah. that's, that's cars and support. support. <laughs> yeah. It's been great. Kids are losing their voices. Yeah. yeah. I've, like, been I lost yeah. my voice yeah. Yeah. today. Yeah, we've been just drinking water to try and get them back. So we can just scream yeah. some more, you know. I mean, so if you guys each want to take a minute and speak directly to lawmakers, to the adults in charge, to the administration, what is your message speaking directly to them? And you can talk right into the Um, well, it's so hard because I think what you really need to understand is that students are living in fear and students are living in grief, knowing that they will never see their friends again. And as important as it is for some people to have guns, it's unnecessary for any weapon such as an AR-15 to be in existence. Um, I was reading an article the other day and it's a weapon exactly designed for like mass destruction. So Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason for that to be of any use to anyone um, in the public and for a 19 year old to be able to obtain that kind of weapon is disastrous and something needs to change. Do you guys go back at all? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, this morning I was sitting, uh, standing for 17 minutes of silence and I looked over to my best friend and I started crying because I was thinking about what I would do if he was shot in front of me and I had to go through that and I had to like feel that grief and I think We've gone through this so many times. I remember in third grade, I think, hearing about Sandy Hook and like imagining like this kind of tragedy happening. Like I, I've grown up knowing that this is a problem. My parents told me what to do if this happened. Like it's crazy to imagine that instead of taking away the problem, we find ways around it and we dodge around the issue and we don't talk about it because it's controversial. And um politicians ignore the fact so they can get more votes and people don't bring up the issue just because they're too scared to make a difference or to do something that can actually save lives. I think when it comes down to it, taking away someone's guns is worth someone's life, no matter your pride or whatever else is left. We can all agree that a human life is more worth it, I think. (laughs) Just during the 17 minutes of silence, um, students were holding up the names of all of the victims and their ages, uh, just looking at them, it, you know, some kids were 14, like 15, 16. That's like what all, those are all of our ages. And to imagine that something like that could ever happen, it's it's so scary. And um, I've been in class where, you know, I've just been like thinking about it and like, um, just like scared, just we're all in fear. Um, and this just needs needs to change. And the only ones that can do that are the lawmakers and our representatives. So it needs to. Um, I think it's really important that we, we really think about the fact that just because we're Massachusetts doesn't mean that we can't make a change here. It's not about us as a state, it's about us as a country. It's not about whether or not we ourselves are facing this fear every day. It's about the fact that we, for some reason, think that because other people are doing it and other people away from us are experiencing this, it means that we don't need to stand up and say something about it. And I think it's really, really important that this many people, we have hundreds of kids out there and they are saying to you and they are saying to everyone around us that we are scared and that we are, we are fed up with not having the safety that we have been promised. We are we are legally required to be in a building that our, our uh, representatives refuse to protect. And that in and of itself is cruel. It's not, it's not worth the votes, it's not worth the pride that you think you have to not be willing to save those kids. It's not worth saying to yourself, 
well, I'll win the next thing, maybe I'll act on it then, when you have hundreds of kids out there from a state as as liberal as this state saying to each other and saying to everyone around them that they are terrified that they are going to be hurt and that that and they are terrified on behalf of their peers around the country that they are not safe in a place that they are so legally required to be. Yeah. Um, I feel like no kid should ever have to walk into school afraid. No kid should walk in thinking, am I going to die today? And I think that that's a thought that a lot of kids have these days. And it's the job as lawmakers to keep us safe. And they have not been doing their job. We are not safe. And we can't vote, but we will be voting. And Mm -hmm. they should know, you guys should know, that we want gun control. We want to be safe and we are not safe. And you have not been doing your job. My question to representatives who have been lobbying for decrease in gun control is, do you have children? Are they in public schools? Do you pay taxes? Everyone pays taxes in this country. If you are paying taxes to fund these schools, then why are we putting more guns in them? Why are we putting guns in places where children are? Children should have no where near like children should not even be in a a space with guns in general like if you if you were just thinking children plus guns that sounds ludicrous but (laughs) according to our government we are supposed to be giving teachers guns which i think is a horrible idea teachers are not soldiers (laughs) they should not have to handle lives especially considering that a lot of school shooters are former students Additionally, I think that legislators need to think about the fact that regardless of what they think of us now, we are going to be voting. And if they do not take action now, they will be ceremoniously voted out of office in the midterms and in 2020. I will be voting in 2020 for sure, and I will make my voice heard. And I'm doing my part now because this issue is immediate. If someone came into my school tomorrow with a gun, that could happen. There's what is there to say that that should not happen and what is there to say that teachers should have guns to stop this? No, you cannot fight fire with fire. We have to have gun control. Giving children Kevlar backpacks, that's ridiculous. (laughs) I'm sorry, that is ridiculous. And and I'm, I'm saying all of this because these are the actual laws that are being proposed. And seeing as I'm a, I'm a freshman in high school, I have to go to high school for the next three years of my life. I mean, I can drop out, but I have no intention of doing so. Um, <laughs> Considering that I'm going to be in school for many, many more years, the fact that I'm going to have to deal with this idiocy is insane and I won't stand it and I won't stand for it and neither will my teachers and neither will my peers. So they can either hear our peaceful demonstrations now or I will take it upon myself to make sure that the government knows that I will not respect their public schools and I I will probably take, I will probably just not come to school if I feel unsafe. I will seek other educational opportunities. I feel like this is an educational opportunity, what I'm doing right now. So I feel like the government has to hear that we cannot stand for their laws that seem to have no sympathy and no forethought into what the students need. So they have to provide our needs. We are listing our needs loud and clear. And they can listen to us now, or they can listen to us in 2018 and 2020 when we will make our voices heard as in the government. So proud of you. Awesome. Anything yeah. you feel like you still want to say? I had a thing to say, but I mean, he said a lot. Yeah, right there. That, that was impressive. Nice. That was great. Um, Here you go. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that hearing about today and being able to come here and express my opinion is means so much to me because mm-hmm. I feel like so much like children are silenced and they're told that they're too naive or too young to understand these concepts when really adults are the ones forcing them on us. They're forcing the ideas in our head that we have to like be unsafe in school. Like we wouldn't have to think about this stuff. We wouldn't have to go out and in the middle of school and stop our education and stop our like learning process just for the fact that adults who are supposed to be able to make the right decisions aren't doing that. Um, and so, like, as it's been said, like, we're going to continue to, like, um, do what is necessary. Um, so there will be a walkout again next week. There will be a rally at my school because we have a late start that day, but others will head to um, the state house yeah. and will be trying to make change. Um, and so this will not be the end of our movement.
Yeah. Can I just say one more thing? (laughs) (laughs) This is just speaking for all of us, but all of our signs, I think, encapture what we mean. And I think it would be appropriate to finish by saying that we call BS and that no more gun violence never again. Yeah. Can't follow that, man. Yeah, you guys are good. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That was amazing.